Hello and welcome to part two of the IPUMS USA series. This is Ryan Womack, Data Librarian at Rutgers University Libraries. Uh, this section, we are going to talk about the free online tools for data analysis that you can use without logging in and without getting into more complex ways of handling your data. So I'm at the IPUMS USA site, usa.ipums.org. And from this site, I am presented right up on the front page with the online tools for analysis to analyze my data online. So once again, here we're not dealing with the specialized supplemental data that we talked about in the first part. We're talking about the primary data collection for the US, which is the decennial censuses and the American Community Surveys. So I can go into Analyze Data Online, and we have a tool uh, that's called IPUM's Abacus. And there are two ways to get to our quick and easy data. One is the IPUM's Abacus, which is the easiest and simplest way. The second is the online data analysis system using the Berkeley SDA uh, software, which is uh, the one um, just below here. But first, we're going to start with the IPUMS Abacus. This is a quick and easy way to perform tabulations. If, you, if that's all you need, or you need to do some preliminary exploration in your data before getting into something more detailed, you might want to consider this. This is also in a mobile-friendly format. So if you did this on your phone, you would see something very similar. Uh, as you can see, there are not a lot of options. We are basically doing a, a, a cross tab. So we can choose two variables. If I go under Add, I get a selection of categories across uh, various areas. And I'm just going to do something um, I hope, I hope reasonably straightforward, and I'm going to select under Demographics. Open that up with the arrow, click on Age, and I'm going to cross that with something from Race, Ethnicity, and Nativity. So click on that to open it up, and I'm going to look at Birthplace. Now, if we wanted, you know, just a very, um, like a two-by-two two cross tab, we could do sex versus Hispanic origin, something like that, which would have basically male and female versus yes and no. This one's a little bit more complicated, so we'll we'll see how that that works. Uh, this is a very minimalistic interface, so I've selected my two variables. Uh, in order to actually see them, what I do is I just click the back arrow up at the top. Uh, it's going to default to the entire US. We're going to look in just a moment at the option of selecting an area. But in order for this table to compute, I have to add two time periods at least, up to two time periods to compare. So I am going to look at the most recent data from the 2019 ACS. Um, and I'm also going to check off 1980 just as another comparison point. Click back again. And you'll now notice that our abacus icon is working. And it's going to think for a minute and run the computation. Um, and it's going to then um, generate our table. Now, this table, uh, depending on how you've set up the variables, can come back in a number of different formats. What we are seeing here is a comparison between uh, 1980 and 2019 for each air area, sorry, each area, which is a state or a country, and each age group. So we start out with the under five years population. And in 1980, 1.8 percent of that population in the U.S. was born in Alabama. By 2019, that percentage had shrunk to 1.5 percent. And we can see sort of, you know, the, the story of um, most of recent years of American development has been growth in the in the South and the West at the expense of the Northeast. So we can see that in 1980, 10% of the young population had been born in California. 
but that had risen to 12% by 2019. Uh, an even stronger growth in Florida, 3.2 to 5.6. Uh, declines in states like Indiana, Illinois, and let's look at New York and New Jersey. New York from 7% to 5.9%. New Jersey from 2.7% to 2.4%. Now that's just the um, under fives, right? And then we can scroll, I'll scroll all the way down uh, to our oldest age group. Now this, see, you can see there's a lot of data presented here because we asked for something that was a little bit uh, compl complex. Um, and we have all these countries, but let, let's just start again with the states. So among 85 year olds, you can see those same trends on a much stronger scale. In 1980, 1.4% uh, of the 85 year olds in the country were born in California, but by 2019, that number had nearly tripled. Um, Florida from 0.6 to 1.1, and again, New York and New Jersey. Um, interestingly, the um, those numbers have increased, I think probably because of the just growth in the older population in general, perhaps. Uh, but New York 6.4, up to 8.3% by 2019. Um, similar sort of scale of growth in New Jersey. Um, we see a decline in states like Ohio. Perhaps, there, you know, th that's perhaps a more um, subtle change across the country. The number of 85-year-olds in general is a much smaller cohort than, um, than other groups. So someone with greater knowledge of U.S. population could tease apart the trends there. And I, I also want to point out, as we go past the states, right, most of the population of the U.S., born in the United States, but a, a significant number born outside of the U.S. Um, and we see those countries, we see the like the percentage of 85-year-old and, and older people born in Mexico grew a lot over this time period. Um, most of the numbers for these countries are going to be relatively small in a percentage point uh, perspective, but we could also change the measure from percent to count um, and so we can see that in 1980 there were 3,181 persons over 85 years old born in Italy that number dropped to 441 by 2019 so a lot of Italian Americans the number actually born in Italy much smaller in the in 2019 Okay, so, you know, this, this obviously we can, we can keep going into this example in more detail. We won't do that. Just to point out the features that are in this view, uh, the shaded bars that we see here are the graph. If that's distracting to you, you can turn that off. Uh, you can collapse the view so that we can navigate more easily to say an age group that we were interested in we wanted to see the 40 to 44 year olds so we actually have a lot of flexibility in the display and one thing you might want to do a lot is to do flip to basically transpose the table so that we can now see the the table sorted by place first and then age Right, so, and I'm going to collapse this so we can have a, a view. Um, let's look at, we'll do New Jersey, then we'll do one country. So the view here for New Jersey would show us in the New Jersey population, uh, the number, uh, and this is where, where we have to be careful of, um, I, I was giving a misleading impression by reporting those numbers before because the size of the sample in the ACS is going to be much smaller than the full 5% sample from 1980. So while there may have been a decline in the number of 
under five-year-olds in New Jersey. I don't think it's as extreme as is portrayed here from 22,000 to 3,800. This is just the raw amount that's in the sample. So this is where we might want to go in and say, rather than the count, let's do the weighted count. The weighted count um, applies population weights so that we can get an estimate of the the full population size, right? So this would be a not a sample, at least the numbers don't reflect a sample. The numbers reflect the estimate of the full population size based on the sample. So using weighted count is a bit more accurate way to make a comparison. Um, and on that basis, uh, the number of under five-year-olds in 1980 in New Jersey was about 440,000. That has grown to about 468,000. But older demographic groups, looks like the, there's a recent birth cohort in New Jersey, but older demographic groups have shrunk in New Jersey. Less teenagers, less 10 to 14 year olds, less 15 to 17 year olds. Um, and that dip sort of looks like it only reverses once we get to people in their late 20s. Um, and of course, the numbers for the n- number of people older than 85 have increased dramatically uh, since 1980 to 2019. Right. So, so in all these, we just pulled one data table, right? We just pulled these two variables um, for two time periods. But you notice that when you manipulate it, you have many different questions you could actually ask to interrogate the data. It's still not a not exactly a, a quick and dirty uh, answer to some questions because you you need to understand how this this data is structured. Uh, so if I turn this back into a percentage basis, right, we can see again another use of percentage to see that the percentage of the New Jersey population that was under five, even though it was it is large now, it's smaller in percentage terms than it was in 1980 and the number of people older than 85 has um, over more than tripled uh, in the in expressed in percentage terms Um, and you can see also here as we scroll down we have all of the countries that are represented Um, and so if I look at something like Italy I can see that the percentage of elderly uh, of the elderly population born in Italy um, actually it's hard to generalize based I'm not going to try to generalize based on what I'm seeing right here because it's it's a mixed picture Uh, if I want to see the a good estimate of the numbers of people born in Italy, I would want to again use the weighted count. So weighted count, uh, we see that there has been a decline in the number of people born in Italy from 1980 up until 2019 across the United States. Um, That's again what we're looking at. And one final refinement to this table, I won't dwell on this this table, uh, the abacus format for too much longer, um, is to note that we can add a subpopulation, right? So we can actually filter the data. And I'm going to keep it simple again and say, okay, let me just look at the female population. So if I say sex, it's going to then show me, well, the two values that sex can take are male and female, according to this data. Again, um, you have to sort of go with the choices that are being presented to you. And so I'll I'll say, just show me the females. I'll click on the back arrow, click back again. And now it's going to recompute and it should show me uh, a number that's smaller than the totals, but might have a 
different percentage balance uh, when we actually look at uh, what's going on there. Here we go. All right, I'm going to collapse again so we can kind of zoom in on, and I'm just going to look at Italy again as an international example. Here we go. Italy, um, the weighted count estimates of the number of women born in Italy in the United States in 1980 looks like this, the number of young children, similar, uh, the number of 18, 19, 20 year olds has dropped off dramatically. That's probably reflective of uh, smaller student population, smaller working population. Um, again, it's a little hard to speculate without knowing specifics, but you know the, the number of babies is quite similar. Uh, maybe families with young children um, are visiting, uh, you know, doing some work for U.S. companies, but by the time those children reach maturity, they perhaps, I'm speculating, go back to Italy for a study, and therefore the numbers drop off dramatically. Um, and so you can see that, you know, Italian immigration was, you know, it peaked a long time ago. Uh, once we start to look at the older population, we start to see um, a bit less of a decline. It's still a decline across all age categories, uh, but people are living longer. Um, and when you talk about people born in Italy 85 years ago or more, you're getting back to the time of peak immigration. Obviously, if we look at other countries, uh, let's say if we look at China, we would see different patterns. So here's China. Um, China, pretty much across the board, we see many more, again, in this case, we're still filtering for, for females, uh, many more in all age categories um, in terms of, you know, the Chinese immigration was substantially later, larger amounts uh, coming later in American history. Anyway, this gives us one lens to filter things. We can go back in, we can change our variables, we can actually filter to a specific place. So if I just want to see what's happening in New Jersey, I can uncheck, uh, well, I have to check off something else first, I think. I have to check New Jersey before I uncheck, before entire USA becomes unchecked. Uh, now if I it, it'll recompute itself and it'll show me totals just for New Jersey, um, including the other countries, right? So if we want to find out how many people born in another country are in New Jersey, we would have to choose the place like this. And I'll pick something... I think we're seeing some countries perhaps drop out of the mix because they're too small to be reported. But let's look at Italy one more time here. And you can see that actually in the 2019 ACS, um, b basically once you get down to very low numbers, it's not going to report something. It's going to say that that's within... The margin of error we don't know how many people exactly responded from ages 15 to 17 or age 20 but it's too small to report they don't want to report those small numbers so um, you notice the comparison becomes a little more difficult this is true of all the survey data the, all the sample survey you get less fine-grained results as you go into smaller geographies so New Jersey is a decent sized state if we went to a state like Wyoming or Alaska uh, or Vermont, we would really face this problem. We, we just can't get like super detailed about every group, every question we'd like to ask for every location. And this tool doesn't let us go down below the state level. Okay, so I think this gives us a flavor of the abacus. It also gives us a kind of introduction to what kinds of variables we're expecting to see um, 
in the in the data set. So it's a great way to play around, get familiar with the IPMS data um, and what, what you're able to do. OK, so let's pause here and we will take a look at the uh, more detailed online analysis system uh, in just a moment. I'll break that into a separate video just for your